Hello and welcome to my Pokemon Platinum Hardcore Nuzlocke with only Fighting Type Pokemon. I'll be using a standard Hardcore Nuzlocke rules for this playthrough. The full rules will be down in the description, but in short, I can only catch the first Fighting Type Pokemon on each route. I will operate with Species and Duplicate Cores, so I can reroll encounters until a valid one is encountered. If Pokemon faints in battle, it's considered dead and must be boxed or released. Not allowed any items in battle besides held items. The battle mode must be set to set mode at all times. And no overleveling past the next gym leader's ace or the final elite four members ace. On screen, I've just put here the uh, the available counters for the run. There isn't that many to play with, but I am super, super excited to use a few of these. The main reason I've chose to do fight types is, is because of my champ as it's my best friend Chase's favourite Pokemon. Um, so I'm very much looking forward to getting my hands on one of them. Without further ado, let's get into it. So we start our journey in Sinnoh and immediately straight away we do get access to our first encounter, the fire type Chimchar, which when it evolves to a Monferno, will become a fighting type so we can use it in the run. Next up we talk to some weird, surely irrelevant guy um, in the lake near our house, uh, don't know his significance at all really. Um, we get to name our starter Chan, um, he does have a decent modest nature obviously with that plus special attack. Um, so that would be decent for the run. We also talk to another creepy guy who gives us an Apple Watch or something. We move on to Route 207. We manage to catch Machop, which has a mild nature, which is dreadful. And we evolve Chimchar, so we can use him in the run. With these additions to the team, it's time to take on the first gym leader, Rock, in the Orbeg Gym. We have a pretty good tight matching for this, so it should be okay. We start with Tread Juice, and he starts with Geodude, so we go for a quick focus energy. He retaliates with Stealth Rock. We hit a Karate Chop and a weak Rock Float is returned. Second Karate Chop with a crit is enough to take down Geodude. Next comes out the Ace, Kranidos, who goes for a Leer to drop our defence. We hit with a Karate Chop which takes it to about a third before a potion, but a Karate Chop with a crit takes it out on the next turn. Next up is Onyx, who shouldn't be too much of an issue. It can only uh, hit us with a Screech to lower our defence even more before a Swift Low Kick takes it down one hit KO for the victory. Next up we have our first encounters with Team Galactic and following this we're tasked with taking on Commander Mars in the Valley Windworks which is an extremely scary and threatening battle. We do start off with Machop for this one while Mars leads with her trusty Zubat. I think we're going to get poisoned anyway to activate our Guts ability so I do go for a Focus Energy. Uh, next up Zubat hits with a Bite so we retaliate with Karate Chop hoping for the crit but to no avail. Rinse and repeat the next turn and still no, no uh, critical hit on the Karate Chop so we're forced to switch over to Monferno. Hits a soft bite with a crit but doesn't do much so we can take it down with a flame wheel. Next up is the Ace Brugly who is extremely terrifying and just hits us with a fake out straight away. We take a scratch and retaliate with a flame wheel which doesn't do too much so we decide to switch over to Leah. We hit another Leah being left on 9 HP before we switch back over to Machop. Machop is able to hit take a scratch but due to the poison we've brought quite low and then probably hits with a scratch but only takes us down to 3 HP before we take it down with a low kick. Just east of Eterna City we're able to head to Route 211 and grab our next encounter, Lee the Meditite. Meditite is a very good Pokemon and also has pure power ability which means our physical attacks are boosted as well. Following the addition of this new team member we're able to head over to the Eterna Gym and take on Gardenia. In theory, it should be quite easy with a fire type. We start off with Monferno against Tertwig. We're able to hit a flame wheel before taking a crit razor leaf before we can take down Tertwig on the second time of asking. Next up is Cherim, which is pretty easily tucked to just below half with a flame wheel. Leech Seed recovers it just above half again before we can smash it down with a flame wheel second time of asking. Let's get a level up in the process as well. Rose Raid comes out, and um, I'm pretty scared, so I, I switch over to Lee, who has to sm smash by a magical leaf. Luckily he lives and we switch back over to Chan who again tanks a magical leaf, it doesn't do too much. Rose Raid connects with Stun Spore but thankfully we have a Hell Cherry Berry so we can smash it down with a Flame Wheel for the second badge. After the gym we take on the Eterna Galactic Builder with no issue so I won't even bother showing that on screen. Uh, and then we catch a Heracross from Honey Tree, I think it's the route east of Mount Coronet we got that from. We name it the Bride, um, and that, that gives us a nice new team member ready for Fantina. 
Uh, Fantina starts with Duskull and I start with Monferno. Uh, as you can see, I deliberate for a bit whether that was the uh, the right choice, but we do stay out and, and hit with a flame wheel and it just goes for a future site. Another flame wheel takes down Duskull and uh, out comes Haunter. We do hit another flame wheel which manages to burn, um, take a soft shadow core and uh, a soft future sight as well before another flame wheel takes it out. After this comes out Miss Magius um, which strikes us with a confused ray. We manage to break through that, hit another flame wheel and we even get a burn from this one as well. Um, I do accidentally switch to my chop here um, and unfortunately we do take a side beam which takes us all the way down to 6 HP before our berry proc. So that was a close one and I really need to stop being uh, so complacent. We do bring out the, the Bride next, which uh, it does hit a Shadow Ball, which doesn't do too much before we can slice it down with an Aerial Ace, which crits to get us our third Gym Bad. A quick trip to the east of Half Home City, and we can actually get our next encounter in the form of a Rolts. Once this has evolved into a Gallade, we can uh, we can add it to the team as it's a Psychic Fighting type, and, and one that I'm very excited to use. So we do evolve it to Kalia, uh, awaiting a, a stone for the evolution. We also evolve and shop at the same time. Next up is our fighting type nemesis, Merlene, and quite a, a decent test for the team actually. She has a obviously a similar team to ourselves, someone that can uh, do quite a bit of damage if we let it. So we uh, we lead with the bride here, and, and she goes for a fake out to cause us to flinch before uh, an aerial ace as a one hit KO and takes it down. Next up is Machoku. I air release again expecting a one hit KO, but unfortunately we take it down to just uh, under a third or a quarter before a second aerial ace is able to take it down. Next up is a Lucario, an absolute beast. Um, so we go to Chan, um, thinking that we'll be able to do some decent damage with a flame wheel. So we tank a quick metal claw before a drain punch takes us to about a quarter, and the flame wheel smashes Lucario to take it into the red. We then bring in Lee, hoping to uh, to get it finished off with Lee. It goes for a force palm as it could have used any move to, to kill us, and unfortunately, we get paralysed. Next up is Treduce, ready to, to finish the job. He does tank a Metal Claw, and then he gets hit with a Drain Punch from the Speedy Lucario, which unfortunately, as you can see, drops him down to 5 HP. I've lost track of how many times this has happened, but he manages to get the kill and the third badge. After defeating our fighting nemesis, we move over to Pastoria City, which is an essential city for a few reasons. To the east, we get our next encounter, Stallone, the Crow Gunk. Following this, we can evolve Stallone into Toxicroak. We can also evolve Lee into Medicham, and lastly, Chan into Infinite. We can also utilize the move laner in Pastoria City itself, and we can get all the elemental punches on Medicham, which is an essential upgrade and, and one that you'll see will really, really affect the run. Following this, Metacham just absolutely sweeps Wake with no issues at all, uh, with Treadjuice just coming in to help clean up the Quagsire. Next up, we have something to do about a bomb, something to do with some pigeons that have headaches on some random route, and then to cap it all off, some fight with some irrelevant geezer uh, before it's time to take on Barry once again um, in our most challenging rival fight so far. Before Barry, however, we can get ourselves back to Mount Coronet now that we have Surf, and grab ourselves a Dawnstone, and you know what that means. We can finally evolve Rambo from a Kalia into the fight and psychic type Gallade, and we can get that on the team. Then it's time for Barry on the drawbridge in whatever town this is called again, who knows. Um, and this is actually quite a tough battle for us. He obviously leads a Star Raptor, which uh, can do quite a damage to quite a lot of our team. Um, one Thunder Punch brings him down into the red before an aerial air smashes us to 36 HP before we take him down. Next up is Empoleon, again quite threatening, um, so we go over to Treduce to, to see what he can do, although <laughs> um, we do get hit with, a, with an aerial ace which doesn't do too much for our revenge takes it down after a second aerial ace. Next up is Heracross who obviously we have our own, um, so we bring out Chan who again gets hit by an aerial ace which apparently every member of his team has before a flame wheel smashes it down into red before aerial ace takes us not far from there ourselves. Final one takes it down, but then obviously it's time to switch for ourselves. Um, we go over to Rambo, who makes his debut, uh, gets hit with a, a fairly hard to take down, but doesn't do too much before a Psychic Cut can take Rapidash down into the red before it takes down itself. 
Finally, last but not least, Rose Raid comes out, but obviously because we have a Psychic type move, we can one hit kill it with a Psycho Cut, defeat Barry. Continuing on our journey to gym number 6 in Vaistor City, where we have Byron, the Steel type expert. I know what you're thinking, this is probably going to be a bit more of an easier gym battle, however it could be a little bit tricky if we allow it to be, so we start with Chan um, where Heli goes for Magneton, we take him to just below half before a second flame wheel is enough to, uh, to get the job done. Next comes out Steelix, uh, so we smack it with a flame wheel, however it doesn't do as much as I'd like before uh, Sandstorm's hit uh, hits us for a bit of chip damage. We then hit it again one more time, which brings him to just below half before it. An earthquake does a hefty amount of damage. We would have been dead to a crit before we can deal a tiny amount with our Oran Berry. We're forced to, uh, to switch over to Lee here, otherwise uh, Infinite is going to die. Um, we take a, an earthquake just about half um, after Sandstorm damage and an Oran Berry heal before one fire punch is enough to take it down to the ground. Last but not least is the Ace Bastiodon, which could be threatening if we allow it to be, however, a quick Force Palm uh, is enough to uh, completely wipe it off the map and uh, get us the Gym Badge. Next up, we head to Iron Island, the home of our next encounter where we meet this weird looking geezer, uh, Riley. Um, by the end of the trip with Riley, weirdly, he gives us an egg um, as to, to say thanks. Um, we decide against cracking soap and for a, for a nice nutritious breakfast. And we actually use it for our next encounter, which is uh, it's going to be the, the nice fighting, I think he's a steel type, uh, Ryalu eventually, uh, which evolves into Lucario. We we do name him Terminator, because I'm clearly running out of name ideas at this point. Um, before we have to return to Veilstone City to, to speak to Professor Rowan and, and Barry and whatnot. And something blows up, weirdly enough. We then uh, have to deal with some Team Galactic stuff at um, the various lakes across Sinnoh, which isn't really worth covering, uh, to be honest, for the purpose of this video. Um, and that leads us to Snowpoint City for the 7th gym badge, the ice type user, Candice. Um, obviously, as you can imagine, given our team uh, and the mix of fire and fighting types, this is a, an easy feat uh, for us to get through um, with our lovely Metacham doing all the work um, to wipe out the team. Some more trivial Team Galactic stuff aside, and we are in the Distortion World to take on Cyrus, the leader of Team Galactic. He has a really threatening team, um, and one that I'm, I'm really going to struggle with. So, we do start with Terminator, who is uh, able to one-hit kill Hamdoom with a, with a swift, close combat. Um, of course, we've got TM, but I'd get a few levels here, because we're quite close to the level cap, unfortunately. Next in is Gyarados, and with Intimidate, we have to switch over to Lee, the Medicham, who uh, should make light work of this after a... Uh, uh, quite a lot of damage from Waterfall, um, before a Thunder Punch, one hit kill does the job. Next up comes in Honchkrow, who suffers the same fate as Gyarados, one hit kill, and down he goes. Crowbat was out next, and he does outspeed Lee, so we need to switch over to Sloan, and uh, unfortunately this is uh, with, with cruel intent. He does take an Air Slash before he gets hit with a Sucker Punch, uh, and then a final air slash is enough to take down Stallone, the Crow Gunk. It's quite unfortunate, however, Stallone didn't really do too much for us in the run, um, so it was a sack that I think I needed to make to uh, ensure that we get out of this battle alive. Rambo takes quite a hard air slash, would have been dead to a crit, but then hits a psycho cut crit to, uh, to take down the Crow by himself. Last in comes in Weavile, the Ice Dark type, so we need to switch again over to our starter, Chan. He does tank a Night Slash, which doesn't do too much. And then, uh, weirdly enough, he, he does go for Ice Punch before we can uh, take it down with a close combat with not much uh, damage taken overall there. So it's quite sad that we've uh, we've lost Toxicroak. I think I called him Krogunk earlier, but it needed to be done. After the small uh, matter of saving the world from absolute devastation, we uh, continue with the small matter of our gym challenges. We take on Volkner. In Sunny Shore for gym battle number eight. I'd love to say that this was uh, challenging and exciting. However, Chan now having Earthquake uh, learnt as a TM move, uh, he's able to essentially just sweep the entire team with that. Um, only needing tread juice right at the end to uh, to help finish the job as he's left on free HP. But after that, we've got our eighth gym badge and it's ready to move towards the elite four. Finally, it's elite four time. And firstly, we are taking on Aaron, the bug type expert. However, due to our vast level difference and type effectiveness, 
he has no issue at all for us so there's no point in even watching as it's uh, essentially a clean sweep uh, from my vast array of fighting type Pokemon. This leads us nicely onto Bertha, the ground type expert and user who uh, does pose a bit of an issue for our team to be honest uh, with, with how strong our Pokemon are. We, we do start with Lead, the Medicham, and Bertha starts with Whiskash, which strangely is one of my uh, favourite Pokemon. Um, we do hit an Ice Punch, and, and then it just sets up a Sandstorm before a Force Palm takes it down. Um, we're only taking a bit of chip damage at this point. Gliscor's in next, and a Swift Ice Punch takes it down in one hit without any issues at all. Then comes in Hippodon, who further reinforces the uh, the sandstorm before we hit a, a nice ice punch to take it to just below half. After a yawn we hit it with another ice punch which is enough to take it down and uh, bring us nicely on to Gollum. As Lee is uh, wanting to take a snooze mid battle we are having to switch here so we do bring in the bride which might look like a bit of a strange choice however earthquake connects um, and doesn't do too much to us. A bit more chip damage and a brick break later we do take it into the red and then um, unexpectedly it goes for fire punch which I, I did not expect it to have at all um, but the citrus berry takes us to a nice level again. One full restore later and it appears that golem's pretty much heal locked at this point so we do go for another brick break to take it into the red. A slight bit more chip damage and then we do take it down. This brings in the last Pokemon, which is actually a Rhyperia, a really cool Pokemon. Um, we have lost a bit of tempo there, unfortunately, due to all the damage that we've took on Heracross. So I do bring in Treadjuice, who uh, takes an Earthquake, which brings him down really, really low before a Citrus Berry and a bit more chip damage. And at this point, I do have to sack. So we go for a Karate Chop, we don't get the crit, and then Treadjuice is took down by Rhyperia's Earthquake. I'm really sorry Chase, I know this is your favourite Pokemon, however, he's not been one of the best Pokemon in the run, so it made sense to let him go down and allow Rambo to come in, a big close combat, to win the battle. After quickly mourning the loss of our beloved Treduce, the Machamp, it's time to take on Flint, who, uh, again, isn't really that difficult, um, as, uh, as we saw with the... Um, the electric type gym, it's sort of a similar story with Earthquake, um, with, with Flint now having a full fire type team. And Chan is able to pretty much sweep the whole thing without taking too much damage. After making short work of Flint, that leaves me to deal with the final Elite Four member, Lucian, the psychic type user. As he's a psychic type user, he does have quite the advantage over my fighting type team, so I'm going to need a bit of luck and a bit of grit to get few few this battle. I do start with Terminator who I set up a sword stance while he sets up some screens. Uh, I set up another before tanking a psychic and, and get my Citrus Berry to heal me back up a little bit. Due to the screens, Drain Punch takes him down to about half. He sets up another before we hit him with a flash cannon which thankfully crits and is enough to take him down. Galliard comes out next who is uh, quite threatening to our team. We do hit a Drain Punch but it doesn't do much at all. Galliard retaliates with his own Drain Punch, taking us down to 11 HP. Reflect wears off so we can do a little bit more damage with Drain Punch now, taking us up to about half. Um, my foot had crashed at this point, but we do take another, get took down to 31 before we can take down the Galliard there and then. And I do apologise for that, I can't remember what made the footage crash. Um, Alakazam comes out next and we use the last of our Drain Punch PP on him. Um, and we're able to one hit KO with a crit, which I think we did need to secure the one hit KO. Rongzong is out next, but a, a close combat with plus two uh, sword stance used. It's enough to just one hit KO it. Uh, even though we do get the two times defense drop, uh, Espion comes out last, and another close combat is enough to just absolutely wipe it off the map and take us nicely into having to take on Cynthia the champion. It's time to get this challenge run done. We take on arguably the toughest Pokemon trainer of all time, the champion, Cynthia. Out comes Spiritomb first, who we really do not have a good answer for, um, obviously with its, its lack of true weaknesses. Um, we're just going to have to hope for the best, so I bring in Terminator, who I'm not sure why, but you know, I've just got to use someone, so I go for a flash cannon. I do take a bit of damage, and then thankfully get a flash cannon crit on the next turn to take it down. In comes Cynthia's own Lucario, and I know we're quicker and stronger, 
so close combat is enough to one hit kill it, even though we drop our defences, we got rid of a major threat there. Lucario is now essentially on a kamikaze mission, so I go for a drain punch, don't restore much, and unfortunately, we are absolutely smashed by an earthquake, and we lose another good friend. In hindsight, I should have went for close combat there to get as much damage as possible, but alas, it's not meant to be. In comes Lee, and absolutely smashes it with an ice punch to take it down. This is where the momentum begins to switch in the battle, I'm absolutely buzzing. I smash it, the next Pokemon Togekiss with a Thunder Punch, we do get the crit and we're able to take it down. I'm not sure if we needed the crit, but it's always good to have. In comes Milotic, I accidentally go for Ice Punch, I did not mean to click it. We get absolutely smashed by a Surf to about half before we can take it down with a Thunder Punch. Last but not least, we have Rosewood who can still do a little bit of damage, however we outspeed, we go for Fire Punch and we are able to one hit KO and take it down, winning the battle and the Platinum Nuzlocke with only fighting type Pokemon. I've really enjoyed playing this run through, we only lost a few friends along the way and I think that we made a good account of ourselves for the fighting type. It wasn't perfect, however we got the job done. I know this video isn't perfect either but I've had a blast making it, it's took me quite a long time to make this one as I've not had time to record it. But we've got there in the end, so thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed, and I will see you all later.